Hey, good Friday morning. Welcome to the WLBB Community Voice on News Talk 1330 FM 106.3. Streaming live online at Newstalk1330.com. And this morning we're on the News Talk 1330 WLBB Facebook page. I keep looking in the camera here, but that's not the camera. That's the light. And now I'm blind and probably will be for the next uh, half hour. Our guest this morning is Steve Fuller. He uh, represents District 4 on the Carroll County Board of Commissioners. And uh, kind enough to join us uh, on this rainy, rainy morning. Good to see you, sir. Oh, thank you. How's, Glad to be here. Yeah, how's the uh, wine-making uh, business going? Uh, it was the worst harvest I've ever had. Is it because it was hot or because you waited too long? No, to- no well, everybody asked me if it was because it was the hot weather. It wasn't the hot weather. It was the cold March. We had, uh, we had bud break, which that's when they open up. Mm-hmm. And then we had a freeze. Well, it killed them all. So I had a second bud break, got up to 70 degrees on a Friday. I remember that. It was in mid-March. And then we had three days of freezing weather. So it killed the second bud break. And then I got what's called a tertiary bud break. And you normally don't get any fruit out of that. But I got 1,100 pounds of fruit out of a third bud break. But it was still. Is that like half a bottle? No, let me see. Like and you don't pounds. sell it, right? You just make it and have I, big parties. Yeah, um, yeah. I sell. It. Yeah, let, you, I, Sheriff, Sheriff Langley's probably listening right is now. He? <laughs> uh, no, I sold it to Three Strands up in Pauling County. He bought it. Of course, yeah. now I do keep some and make make some for myself. Oh, sure. Yeah. And um, and you know, every time we bring a guest in, you know, they say, hey, "Should I bring anything?" And I kind of joke and say, "Yeah, you know, bring us this, bring us that, and you know, a couple gallons of coffee and things like that." But you were kind enough. Your wife made us homemade biscuits this morning, and by golly, we all liked them. Uh, Josh, Joel, we all had some, and the jelly's awesome too. So uh, please tell her thank you very much. Uh, I'll was, pass that along. Yeah, that was, that was very nice of her. Um, I guess the first thing we can talk about is the millage rate, since oh, that's yeah. the topic. I mean. This time of year, I mean, every municipality and uh, entity's got to talk about it, got to deal with it. Um, people start uh, getting frustrated at the potential of paying extra taxes once they get those notices in the mail. And, yeah. Um, so we've talked to you know everybody so far. Uh, I've spoken with Michelle Morgan, who is the uh, chairman. In case you didn't know, she said that she is going to suggest a full rollback of the millage rate. Uh, right. Had Ernie um, Reynolds on the program about uh, two, three weeks ago as well, and he said that he's going to support that. What are your feelings on uh, rolling back the military? Well, I, I support a rollback. Last year we had to we had to compromise because I was asking for a larger rollback. Uh, Commissioner Chance did not, did not want that large of a rollback, neither did anybody else. I was the only one. So we compromised and get a partial rollback. Yeah, a small rollback. It's, it was so small, I don't know if you'd call it a partial, but it was a partial rollback. But I'm going to support a full or a partial rollback. Now, we don't have all the information we need yet. Right. They're, they're still compiling it. <clears throat> and, and it's the way you get your millage rate is the budget that you set divided by the tax digest. And then that will tell you what your millage rate needs to be. What, what, if you rolled back, if the rollback, it, it would not raise taxes in theory. No, on, uh, no, you're... It, with with everything that's in place right now, the the governor signed. Uh, I can't remember the name of the bill that he signed, but it's going to give everybody tax relief. Property owners, it's going to give them some tax relief, and there are some some of the folks are going to get up to uh, they could get up to a five hundred dollar cut, or I don't know if you call it a cut, but some relief on their. Uh, if we do what we want to do, your taxes will will either – now, this is if you're in the county. Mm-hmm. you got all these other jurisdictions that we have no control over. But if you are a county resident, a homeowner in, the, in a county resident, chances are your taxes are going to go down. Hubert Sparks is probably down there going, oh, no. Why did he say that? Yeah. They, do you know how that's going to show up? I mean, is it something that, that um, property owners, they didn't have to sign up for it, you know, like the homestead exemption or anything mm-hmm. like that? No, well, no, that's if you've got the homestead exemption. Good chance your taxes are going to go down. It'll be in your tax bill. It's in the – there was there was a uh, – Vicky put a put an ad in the paper mm-hmm. uh, explaining it's an $18,000 tax relief bill that the governor signed. So, um, okay, but you guys, I think is it next week that uh, Carroll County government's going to meet for the millage rate? Is a special called meeting? Yeah, I think the 22nd, okay. August the 22nd. Is that the only thing that's going on at that meeting? Yes. Okay. I, so, that's as far as I know. All right, I think we've been asked to uh, stream that one, so uh, so we're going to, to do that. Something to look forward to. And, and look, this people are saying that 
that our tax assessor is the one that's causing all that's not true the tax digest is set by the uh state department of audit and we get the tax digest or, or hubert gets the tax digest and he's required to follow it now there, there is a ratio right and he has to say 38 and 42 or is yep, it 30, okay. 38 and 42 he has to stay and he works real hard and has been very successful at keeping us inside that ratio if you fall below 38 then you've it affects your uh, public utilities tax. Mm -hmm. It'll drop. If you fall below 36, I can't. There's something else. But it is a penalty. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's it. If you fall below 36, then we have to start paying a fine. Mm -hmm. So and those are all things to consider. I mean, even, you know, I was talking with the Carroll County Board of Education was earlier this week. I mean, about, you know, because the tax digest went up here, they need to um, – um, the state will give less funding to the school system. That's right. You know, so it's, it's all these things that, the, you know, blame it on the state. That's right. All right. You know, call Mike Dugan and Jay Collins. You and need to talk to, to your state legislature. check into that. But, but, but in defense <laughs> of that, there are 159 <clears throat> counties <clears throat> in the state. Now, I am a proponent that we need to have a little more say-so in the county of how we do assessments. But there's 159 governments <clears throat> inside the state. So that's a, that, w that could be 159 different assessments but having all that information when it comes down to our municipalities and the county to make that decision of whether or not to raise the millage rate if you roll back the millage rate you're basically not collecting any additional money so i think the the perspective of the property owner is well why can't you live on the same budget you did last year you know why can't you prepare for that three four years ahead and just keep that budget exactly the same why is there the need to even um, collect that additional money. Well, price, price of goods and services <laughs> goes up. Our fuel bill for the county has gone through the roof. Mm -hmm. And we also do paving. Well, if, if fuel goes up, paving goes up. It's It works like that. But now we have done a – we kept our budget. Our budget's not a whole lot different. I think, was it $2 million difference? What was it, $2 from, million? I think from last year. Our budget, our total budget for this year is 73.2. Mm -hmm. So I think it went up – Two million. When you guys do your budget, do you count how much money? I mean, you know, there's splossed money to be spent. You know, in the coming year as well as that. That's going to be separate. From that's that. a different budget, right? Yeah, and and we're we're ahead on that. Okay. As right, far we, as the we, collections, yes, yeah, yeah. The taxes. Well, it, and the taxes are tied. The price of the price of goods goes up. So when you buy something, you pay more tax on mm -hmm. it. And I, I wouldn't necessarily expect you to know this offhand, more of a Michelle question, but as far as the collections, you know, you, you set a maximum when you um, agree to that SPLOS, Special Purpose Local Option Sales Tax, right? Yeah. Six years? So, yes. Six years. So you set a maximum that you can collect during that six-year period. Do you know what kind of pace the uh, county on as far as those collections? I mean, could it be done after four years, four mm -hmm. and a half years, five years? Who? <clears throat> No, you know, I don't know. You don't know the, I don't know the answer to that. I'd have to ask a. And the thing first. is that I'm always looking at with that. I mean, if if it is finished collecting after five years, then the county will likely uh, put out a uh, request to vote again to to get another one started. Oh, yeah. So you don't miss out on that collection right. at all. That's true. But we are ahead on collections right now mm -hmm. on the splice. I hope I answered that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I, again, I mean, I, I didn't expect you to have that yeah. that information handy, but well, that's why we pay these folks in these departments. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Fuller represents District Four on the Carroll County Board of Commissioners. He's our uh, guest this morning. After we take this first break, uh, I want to talk about the the redevelopment authority or the development authority. Yeah, well, yeah. is it redevelopment authority or development development, development authority? authority. Uh, some changes made to the development authority that will affect Carroll County. Uh, talk a little bit about the uh, tax allocation district um, approvals over the last month or so, and. Uh, Maybe talk a little bit about uh, the potential to split the uh, Coweta Judicial Circuit. I mean, you okay. just, I think he approved at least a uh, understanding that well, you got were a in board. favor of it, right? Yeah, they put yeah. a board together to look at to it. To look at it, okay. All right. We'll do that uh, after this first break. Time right now is 8.39. We are on the News Talk 1330 WLBB Facebook page. So if you wanted to post a comment or question up there, I'll take a look at that during the break and share that information with our guest, Community Voice, brought to you by Tanner Health System and Oak Mountain Academy. Oak Mountain Academy is an innovative school of academic excellence celebrating over 61 years. I'm Patrick Uran, head of school, inviting you to join us on the mountain to see our mission and vision in action. Academic excellence, a faith-based environment, and dynamic opportunities are just a few of the reasons our families choose Oak Mountain Academy. Academic scholarships and tuition assistance are available. For more information, visit us at oakmountain.us. Discover your journey at OMA. Prepare, explore, and achieve. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. 
It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. Eight forty. Welcome back to the WLBB. Keep looking at the light instead of the camera. Eight forty. Welcome back to the WLBB Community Voice on News Talk thirteen thirty FM one hundred six point three. Also streaming live uh, online at News Talk thirteen thirty dot com and on the News Talk thirteen thirty WLBB Facebook page. This morning, our guest is Steve Fuller, District Four on uh, the Carroll County Board of Commissioners. The time right now is uh, eight forty one. Development Authority. That uh, conversation was brought up at, at the end of the last work session. Um, uh, Brian Dill made a proposal or you know, suggested something, uh, the potential for something for you guys to consider that. Was that brought for him, or did somebody within the county say, hey, Brian Dill, look at that? Brian Dill is the brand-new uh, president of, of Carroll County um, yeah. Yeah, Chamber of Commerce. But is that like one of the, uh, the first things that he did brought that to you guys, or did somebody has somebody been hoping to do that for a while and said, hey, Brian, here's a chance to present this to us and educate us? Well, I'm not exactly – the first I heard about it was <clears throat> from Brian. We all met with him, <clears throat> and uh, he brought that up. And I liked it right out of the gate. Uh, we ran a seven-county right. development authority. And, I mean, I think we were in – I know Fulton. We were in with Fulton, Douglas. And we're more like Harrelson County, Heard County. We're all out here on the west side of the state. And I feel a lot more comfortable being with Harrelson and Heard than right, I was. Right, now it's the three, right? Yes, the three. It'll be us, Carroll, Heard, and Harrelson. And part of the problem of having, like, uh, multiple counties is, like, it had to have uh, majority approval for projects or yes. to do things. And Yeah, it was clunky. Yeah. I, I guess that's a good word, clunky. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and I think Brian had suggested that it had been maybe a year since they'd actually met because they couldn't get a quorum right. to discuss things. Well, why do we need a development authority? Why, uh, you know, the, their duties? Why can they not be, you know, chalked up to the elected officials or you know the chairman? Even well, you got <clears throat> there's people <clears throat> from various backgrounds that you put on the development authority, and something we talked about was agribusiness. And I think now we're in a good we're in a good position with Harrelson and Heard. Carroll, I mean, agriculture is still one of our largest industries in Carroll County, that we could bring some agribusiness to Carroll County. And that's Harrelson's, Harrelson and Heard both are still agricultural. They're focused on agriculture. So that's something, but we need business. I guess that, to answer your question, we need, you need people from various backgrounds on a development authority. You need people from real estate, construction, farming, to get to give input where if you got elected officials it may be kind of narrow mm-hmm. on on the input that you get from elected officials but each commissioner gets to appoint somebody is that uh, well maybe two people yes i i mean at the carroll county chamber of commerce yes on the on that development authority the, yeah. we each put somebody on it and we will have to i think that's I need to get with chairman morgan on that we're not going we won't do it i think as a board we will make appointments to the to the three county development authority, well, yeah, 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 county. right. Yeah, right. Yeah. But I don't think I will go out into the fourth district, pick somebody That's out, right. and put them on a on a committee like we do now. I got you. The um the the, the development <coughs> authority has powers such as uh, offer. I don't know. They offer tax abatements, or they can approve tax abatements. Um, bonds. I don't think they can approve it. They can offer it. They can offer it, you and then you guys, it has to be brought to you. Yeah, I think that has to come from an, <coughs> from an elected body. Okay. All right. okay. All right, uh, Steve Fuller is our guest on this morning's Community Voice Program. Development Authority, you guys did approve that split anyway, and yes. uh, so it's it's set. Um, the fact that they did it now, do we expect that we're going to see some action? I mean, do they do that ahead of something uh, potentially think, cool that might be coming down the down the pike? Well, I haven't. I mean, we haven't gotten anything specific, but uh, I guess I can say this, Brian. You know, there's going to be they're looking at an inland port in Troop County. Mm-hmm. Well, there's and that's that's, all, that, that's a result in the discussion for the bypass right through. Well, Basket. which leads to another discussion. Yeah. Well, cool. Let's have them both. Okay. They're talking about building some other bypass through Carroll County. And right now it's in a – and I, when I say they, I guess it's coming from the state. Mm-hmm. First I heard about it was from Senator Dugan. So I don't know where – 
nobody's come up with any plans that I know of, but the only people that are talking about it, and, my, and Mike didn't tell me this, I heard this from some other folks, was to come off somewhere at Waco, cut through the west part of the county, and connect with US 27 somewhere between Carrollton and Rootville. That cuts right through the agricultural part of the county. Now that's something we're gonna to have to take a strong look at. And I've already talked, when, when I met with Brian, we talked about that. I am a proponent of moving things on rail as much as you can. Now, all the truck drivers are probably going to get mad at me. But the, the but, plan for that is to detour the truck drivers off of 27, like yeah. when they do th- come through Carrollton. Yeah, well. To, because with that, um, you know. Technically, that technically so. we have a bypass. Mm-hmm. we got a bypass that goes around Carrollton. We just have to keep the trucks out of downtown and make them use the bypass that goes around. But now they've got to get off on US 27 South, and there's all those shopping centers down there. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a traffic nightmare. So if 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 we're going to use the existing bypass, we're going to we're going to have to do something to get figure out some way for them to avoid all the shopping centers south of Carrollton. But now that's above my pay grade, and right? that's still potentially a decade away for oh, all yeah. this to happen. If it ever happens, if, okay. If it ever happens, but uh, we're just in a preliminary discussion on this. Brian is going to meet if I hope I'm not getting too far out. No, he here. said you probably should talk about it. Yeah, right. He's going to have a sit down with uh, Norfolk Southern and CSX. So, and I told him I would like to be part of that when you do that, because if we're going to ship a lot of goods from Savannah to Lagrange, right now only three percent of those goods that's coming out of Savannah is on rail. That's not enough. So. One way to eliminate a lot of the traffic coming through Carrollton is to use the existing rail system that we have to get the goods to LaGrange, and you can do it, and there's a way to do it. I was say you say that, but then you can hear people in Villa Rookie and Temple right now frustrated because you're adding more cars to the to the trains, and they'll end up uh, you know blocking their traffic. Well, do you want that, or you want more? Uh, and by the way, the federal it depends on which day it is. Yeah, they're about to raise the limit federally on. Uh, truck traps so they're going to raise it to 90,000 pounds the, the trucks the truck yeah, the trucks yeah they're yeah. going to raise the weight up okay i mean this is an interesting conversation I mean, i'm glad to see the state's getting that far ahead of it but i mean so yeah don't yeah. freak out yet i mean it's still you know 10 years right. away but and, but there is a potential for you know i mean eminent domain right i mean it, in, in the agriculture land i mean that would be a concern there is a place in east georgia and i can't remember there's it's a there's a rock quarry and they want to build a rail line, I think, 15 miles long to get to the rock quarry. And they're going to cut through a farm, 600-acre farm. And they're trying. They're talking about using eminent domain to take, to take land from this family farm that's been there for generations. That's a slippery slope. Oh, yeah. When you start talking about using eminent domain. And that's a – you're going to use public money and public – authority for private industry and it's not that they you know not not defending it but they do try to compensate you know so in some way right if, if, if during eminent domain they'll give you some oh, yeah, money you not get, that it's you know they well, get, they not give that it's you, cool but they give you fair market what they consider fair, fair market, market value, value. Yeah. yeah what they say is fair market yeah. value uh, time right now is 848. Steve Fuller, our guest on this morning's Community Voice program. Before we do take a, our final break, um, the tax allocation district discussions. Initially, Carroll County uh, did not support, uh, as a whole, did not support the uh, tax allocation district for Villarica. Carrollton came along and said, hey, we'd like to do it. There was support for that one, and then there was support for the Villarica one. Uh, do you have feelings on that, about the, you know, the change, and about accepting both of those tax allocation districts at this well, point? Well, I, 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 I never voted. I voted against the... Uh, tax allocation district in Villarica, even with the changes. And it's because of the bond. It's all being tied to a bond. Mm-hmm. And, the, I, and it depends on the economy. If the economy yes, tanks, then... That's right. I mean, and I know Villarica, they've, they've given us some guarantees that they, they might be able to do it in 10 years, you know. But, but a tax allocation district bond can be stretched out to 50 years. Mm-hmm. So... It all depends on the economy. And they're promoting. I mean, they, they think they can do it in 15, oh, well, maybe, they maybe think, 12. Yeah, yeah. I know. But, again, and this was in the, you know, you have, you have to go with what your constituents are telling you. And, and I, was, I, was not, I was not a proponent of it anyway, but then I had constituents. And their idea was we're using our tax money to do, you know, why should my taxes in 
on a farm in Clem mm-hmm. go to build something in Villarica. And I told them, I said, well, that's not exactly the way it works. But they kind of had that in their head, and they just said, no, we don't need to be a part of this. Yeah. Um, Carrollton, but- it was not tied to a bond. That, yeah, that's, that's the key. They were paying as they go. But now we haven't given the final – we haven't signed any paperwork on that. We got an intergovernmental agreement, and I can't really go into that because we're sure still we're still talking to – do, do, you, do you see um, you know, maybe Temple um, considering a tad? <laughs> Have there been discussions at a Temple at all? You know what's going to happen. The genie's out of the bottle now, mm-hmm. and you can't get it back in. So every municipality in the county could start doing it now. Do and it. I mean, you just – you know. We'll wait and see. Have to wait and see. Yeah. All right. How many, how many different jurisdictions are there in Carroll County? I can't remember. Well, we got what, Temple, what, Whitesburg, uh, Mount Zion. Mount Zion, Bowden. Yeah. About seven, I guess. Yeah. 852. We're talking with Steve Fuller. He is the uh, District 4 Commissioner on the Carroll County Board of Commissioners, our Friday guest. Boy, it's ugly outside right now. But yeah. we'll, uh, we'll take our final break and come back and uh, wrap up our program. If you have a question or comment for Steve, feel free to post it on the News Talk 1330 WLBB Facebook page, and I will look at it during the break and uh, hopefully have time to share it with him. I know I don't have the uh, best reputation as far as being able to share these uh, questions and comments in time, but I will try my best if you pop it up there. We'll be back with more after this. The AP Scholar Journey at Oak Mountain Academy is designed to provide students with a clearly defined advanced placement curriculum track to earn a series of distinctions upon graduation. This journey enables academically prepared students to pursue college-level studies throughout 17 AP courses in five subject categories while enrolled at OMA. I'm Patrick Uran, Head of School, inviting you to journey with us on the mountain. For more information, visit us at oakmountain.us. Discover your journey at OMA. Prepare, explore, and achieve. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. Back to the WLBB Community Voice on News Talk 1330 FM 106.3. Uh, my name is Colin Worthington. My guest this morning is Steve Fuller, represents District 4 on the Carroll County Board of Commissioners. We've got a guy from out in uh, Harrelson County who uh, says, Steve Fuller, great American. And that's how he sounds. <laughs> okay. Uh, Tyler Paul Smith. He, uh, oh, said yeah. That about okay. you. And, yeah uh, good morning good. to Kimberly McCormick, Brownlee, Sarah Pitts, Leslie Smith McPherson, and uh, Jessica Crook, who should be working right now at uh, KISS 102.7, but uh, watching us. So thank you. Good morning, Jessica. Uh, good morning. Wrap up our show here with uh, with Steve uh, splitting the Coweta Judicial Circuit on our program. I guess about two and a half months ago, um, uh, Herb, uh, uh, the, the district attorney, um, suggested that hey, I'm going to bring that back again. It was kind of poo pooed on about four years ago, five years ago. Yeah. Uh, but he said he'd like to bring that back and, and and reconsider it. There were some counties. I think maybe two out of the five counties in that Coweta Judicial Circuit have already approved um, their intent, their support. I think, it troop and, I think Troop and Kaida. Okay, and then you guys had that presentation uh, right. consideration. You're, you're going to do an investigation into it to see if it is. Yeah, they form, we formed a committee, mm-hmm. and, and that uh, the only question I had about that was there was no representation on the committee from the district attorney's office or from uh, the public defender's office. Mm. But uh, The district, district attorney's office, you can assume that they'd support it, but maybe they a do. defense yes. attorney – I, I think they no. I think they support it. But yeah. but if you're going to put a committee together, that's going to have something to do with affect everybody. You know, else. that's going to affect it. But but anyway, I got some. The uh, let me see, Commissioner Chance and Commissioner Bailey are on that, and they assured me that they would make sure that they had input mm-hmm. that they, that that committee would get have input from the DA and from the uh, public defender's office. Now, for that to happen, though, it, it would the uh, is there a, a, a justice qualifying committee or something like that who has to approve it, and then it has to be approved by the state? It has to be approved by the state. Okay, so yeah. it's not something that's going to happen tomorrow. I mean, it could, mm-hmm. it could happen, I guess, at the end of next year. Yeah, have you maybe. talked with local legislators to see if they would support it? Because there may have been a legislator who just checked in a little while ago who 
perhaps in the past has suggested he may not support something like that. Yeah. No, I guess that's something I probably I, – I haven't talked to any of them. I mean, I don't think we're far enough along yet. Right, sure. You know, sure. When, when we start getting a little closer, to, then I'll uh, definitely talk to them because if, it, if the legislature – if they say no, then that's it. That is it, yeah. Yeah. Um, we have brand new admin building coming. What's the yeah, what's the how's that the process going with that? Well, the architects, we still haven't gotten everything back from the uh, from the architects. It's still they're still working on it. Mm-hmm. So, but it, it, right now we're moving. There's a lot of um, we're moving uh, the everybody. offices that oh, are yeah. at the old West Virginia Technical College building yeah. across from the sheriff's office, right? Yeah, we. Yep. I don't think we haven't got everybody moved, but we're getting close. I mean, we're we're going to start demolition. I think they're still planning on starting demolition sometimes this month. Are you guys going to save like a, a brick or something? Well, you know, you I all get a brick. And- one, I've had several people say that we ought to sell the bricks, you know, to people that went to school. At, well, yeah. I went to school there. Yeah, that's right. Well, it was, what kind of school was it beforehand? It was an elementary school. Yeah. Yeah, it was College Street Elementary. Yeah. Uh, well, matter of fact, up where uh, community development, where that building mm-hmm. is, I was in the first grade. That was the first year that building was there. They had torn down the old white two-story board building and built that other up up there, and we were the first class. That's to go a decent through. idea. It's not going to hurt anything to, to try and sell them, and you know, yeah. as long as you say, "Hey, we're going to donate this money well, to something else," you know. Well, we did we did ask the architects if we could integrate some, do something to integrate some of the bricks from the old building back into the new building and they said yeah we can do something Good. So. that'll be sharp um you guys also approved uh, another year for carol connect carol connection connection carol the uh, transportation yes, system yes, that's right. did that this summer um yeah that's approved. through three yeah three we get that's through three rivers right yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you see has that been successful is that um i mean i know during covid it kind of slowed off a little bit um, yeah but it's but the county does pay a little bit for it so i see it <laughs> there's one comes by my house every morning about seven fifteen and goes down the road and comes back with two or three people in it. And I'm not sure where they're going, but I, I see them out on the I see them out on the road, so you know. They're just cruising. I imagine they're going to work. If they go into the same house and getting the same people every morning, they're probably yeah. going to work. Um, as far as um, employment in the county, are we still there's still some spaces that we're lacking? I mean positions yes. that we're lacking that are that are hurting the county because we don't have them? We're not hurting, but we could use them. Firefighters. Uh, we got need a heavy equipment operator operator. Uh, mechanic, heavy heavy equipment mechanic, out here at Public Works. Those are hard to find, and those are all put on the website, yes, the Carroll County GA dot com website. Yeah. Okay. All right. We got about two minutes left. I want to make sure that we um, promote the American Legion Family Barbecue, which is coming up. Don Levins wouldn't you know wouldn't let us get away right now. Right. He, he, matter of fact, if I didn't do it, I'd hear from him. Yeah. We do this every year, and it goes. I mean, all of our <laughs> proceeds goes to veterans, veter- veterans funeral services, children and youth, and it's. It's how we operate the post. Uh, I mean, frankly, if if we don't have a successful barbecue, then we have to start we have to start cutting things out. But anyway, I have tickets. There are three of us that have tickets. But if you would like to get tickets, can I give them my phone number? Absolutely. Yeah. If you don't mind people calling you, no, sure. Well, I get calls every day. <laughs> uh, my number is seven seven zero three zero one three two two one. If you'd like to support the American Legion, give me a call. And, oh, and if you own a business in Carrollton, you're probably going to be seeing me because I'll probably come by and ask how many tickets you want. Is there a competition between the American Legion members to sell the most? No, but that may not be a bad there idea. There you go. Come on. Yeah. Maybe I could give them a free bottle of wine. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Next time you can bring us a free bottle of wine. But thank you, uh, thank your wife though. Thank you for those biscuits; they were fabulous. So uh, I appreciate uh, her taking care of us this morning. All of us starving boys. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks. Uh, thanks for coming out this morning, Steve. All right. Thank you. And thank you for watching and listening this morning's Community Voice program here on News Talk thirteen thirty FM one hundred six point three. My name is Colin Worthington. Uh, stay dry this weekend. I think uh, still the chance for rain later on today and uh, and maybe over the weekend, but at least it's going to be cloudy and ugly today, if nothing else. Josh, thank you for all your hard work this week. Joel, thank you for all your hard work this week. Go out and make it a great day.